to SP Global Pitch. My name is Sandra Dorsey. I am the co founder and co moderator. Today, we will bring you some companies with ideas and disruption to transform the world. And the audience, we have investors, and we hope that this synergy will be quite beneficial to all. Welcome to SP Global Pitch. My name is Sandra Dorsey, and I want to say thank you to my co-founder and co-moderator, Frank Skorpgaard, and we are happy to be here today for another episode of S&P Global Pitch Founders Chat, and so today we have a fantastic topic, which is probably on the mind of many of you as um, also being founders. It's The topic today is going to be funding you know, funding for, you know, a small to medium sized companies. Feng? Yes. Hi. Hello. Um, my name is Feng Skogard. Um, thank you very much for you joining us today. It is, um, again, our weekly powder talk. And um, I love finance. We try to pick some topic that you would find useful and it would help you on your way. Fantastic. Sandra and I will, yeah, Sandra and I will talk more about this. And um, first of all, we are just, uh, just remind you that the first pitch event will be the 3rd of November before we start talking about financing because it's very interesting. So it is going to take the whole hour. I'm so excited. You know, that's the thing. People always say, you don't seem like somebody who's financed because I get so excited about everything. And so for me, you know, we, you know, as founders, Fong and I, we had to work very diligently because this idea came, you know, in a very short time. So we had to rush because we know that you audience are part of, uh, we would like you to benefit some of the uh, knowledge and experience that we have, which is why we're putting t this together. But it had to come, you know, in the last, it's only come about for the last three weeks. So we were um, making sure that we could meet our target, which was November 3rd, which is November 3rd. So let me, let's start talking about um, the funding side of things. Of course, we know being in, you know, for all of us out there, whether you are in finance or whether you are in whatever business you're in, we know that cash is king and having a background and if you haven't listened to um our first episode please go back and listen to that as a matter of fact go back and listen to all of them because you know it this will be a series of talks which will give once a week ourselves two founders discussing different topics including our experience so in the first topic we talked a little bit about our background my background is finance i love finance but i'm a well-rounded person so I like to call myself a, um, eternal, uh, a eternal founder because I'm constantly coming up with new ideas that need to be fleshed out. And of course, when you're fleshing out ideas, what you need ideas. is capital. Need is capital. So, yes. Fongs? Uh, yes, Sandra, I think that it is better for you to talk about financing from the US and then for me to talk about financing from the UK because they are a bit different. They are a bit different. And so, you know, even though I have done both, um, yet for the sake of time, we'll just go ahead and discuss the um, ideas behind each one and the differences. So, Fong, you want to start? Yes. It is, um, I, I just want to start saying that in, um, in the UK, there are a lot of um, organizations and also the government supporting small businesses. And um, it, it is, uh, the, the problem is that there are so many that you don't know where to start. And us, because we have tried it, then it's so we, we, we know how it is and we try to help you to, to, to find the, the, the best fit for you. Right now, COVID-19. The government are giving you um, support up to 500,000. And um, the thing is that your company has to be in the UK. So if you are outside the UK, then you, Europe can, uh, can have some um, support for you. For the UK, in the UK has MRC, 
government, they have the site, the website. You go in and look into it. And if you have any problems, let me know because I know the process, how to apply for it. Um, the company, however, the company has to be in operation in the last year and um, you need to earn up maybe, I, I can't remember exactly how much you earn up, but how, about 50 or 100,000. And the size of the company is um, that you are small businesses or um, middle businesses. The loan is that for the first year, you don't have to pay interest. And afterwards, they are to, you, you can negotiate. So it is very um, attractive offer for you. It's the, no, the, the one thing. The other thing is that you have uh, like um, UK funding and um, you have um, small business loans. The banks like Barclays, has MRC and has SBC, Lois, they are very good at helping small businesses. They are small, small loans and um, the agreement can be very efficient. You can negotiate, you can come into the bank. Also, you, we have um, Silicon Valley Bank. As long as you are using their bank, they have different products to offer you, to make you, to give you a good start. Um, it is there, it is the organization, the bank, and um, there is also the British Business Bank. It is, the government is helping this organization to help you. And also small business um, organization institution that who also can help you. So in total, the COVID offer you some offer uh, for the loan. The banks they can they also have some offer to help you. And um, some institution they also offer help. There are three for me. There are three kinds of helps that you can get. And um, depending on your size, your needs, and uh, because some some of the organizations they have different criteria, you have to follow. If you need any help, let me know. I'll uh, I'll try to help you to find the right solution for you. Of course. So of course we've been talking about um, you know these are government pos um, financing government grants. You know we will go further into the different types. So this is. Uh, for existing um, existing businesses in the U.S., we have what you call a small business administration disaster loan that can be used to repair or replace um, the following items. These are, you know, also what you could use. They are very, the reason why people like SBA loans is because they are very low interest and also because they are. Um, they they are provided um, to protect and prevent a, a, any further economic challenge, and so we have these can be um, you know you can use them for if you're having deal uh, difficulties with real estate, personal property, machinery, uh, equipment, inventory, and business assets. We can use these to uh, replenish or whatever where whatever area yeah you are in you're deficient in. So the loans, it can be used as working capital. It can be used to purchase inventory. And most of all, because of COVID, it can be used you know, to replace loss of capital. And so it cannot be used to, um, so we're talking about a, a regular SBA loans, but the SBA also has some special, um, some special loans, which is what you call the, um, the Paycheck Protection Program, which is a loan that gives you opportunity to be able to sustain your uh, your workforce during this difficult time, as you're not getting that much, you're not getting as much uh, revenue as you would to as you would usually. So we suggest that definitely you each case is different, 
especially in the US, there's just a wide range of different types of businesses that qualify. So we, you know, these, the government is very specific as to what they assist with and the type of businesses that they allow to apply. And so the main key things about the PPP is, um, the, you know, it would be for the with less than 10 million and it would be, um, let's see, a hundred percent of your loan can be forgiven if you follow the certain guidelines. So it's a forgivable loan. And also just keep in mind that you can apply for both the PPP and other types of loan through the government. So um, just always check availability before you apply, which is why it's good to reach out to someone like me who can guide you through the proce process. So the eligibility for the PPP is any business category under accommodation, food service, such as restaurant, hotels, 500 or fewer employees, it's um, you know tribal businesses, independently owned franchise, and then we have the self-employed workers, independent contractors, gig workers, sole proprietors. The PPP loan application, um, you know, can be found on the government website. But you know, just to be sure, please contact me so that I can assist you with that. Um, the other thing is. The, uh, the deadline, the, con the government, of course, this is a loan that has been provided because of COVID. So the government had put a cap on it, but because we're still trying to get a grip on sort of the numbers, the COVID, no one is the, has determined an end date for that. So this is a program that's been put in place by the government, but also is re is being renewed periodically. So for instance, they'll have it in place. It, wants, it was scheduled to end um, until August, but they just re renewed it. So it's, const it's good to know, to be in touch with someone like myself, to be able to um, know exactly what the requirements, if during the extension, they change any of the guidelines. So that's, um, it, it, it assists with employee payroll. So salaries, wages, commission, tips, uh, benefits, including vacation, parental, all that are assessed as part of compensation. So for sole proprietors, we are looking at wages, commission, income, and net earning from self-employment. Then we have seasonal businesses. Uh, you have an average monthly payroll uh, between February 15th and um, June 30th, it, which is going to be capped at $100,000. In new businesses, average monthly um, from, you know, we would have to see from January 1st to February 29th, and that's capped at 100, um, 100,000 per employees. So, you know, it, it's, again, uh, it, it's a case-by-case -case basis, and it's important that you speak to uh, the exact, the, the, the line of work that you're in. So that's for the government loans, but I want to talk to um, more. So this, these are these are pretty much the basic loans that uh, you have available now. But new, I do have as well um, a alternative form of payment. I'm sorry, a, a alternative form of funding, which is now available through my uh, through us again. We we talk about this. Um, it could start from $5,000 and can reach up to a million dollars. This is for the smaller business and the rates vary. And so we have a bridge loan. What a bridge loan is it gets you, you know, if you have some inventory that you have, um, that you, you, if you have receivables, like you have, you're waiting to collect from a certain, uh, a certain client, you haven't received your payment yet from that client. We can give you a um, financing until you get paid, and so when you get paid, you can re uh, you can um, you know you repay the loan. So there are various products that we can offer you depending on the type of situation that you are in. And so I definitely so much, so I'll just mention some of the industries. It's bar, beauty salons, catering, clubs, event planning general constructions, gym, heavy construction, high-end sit-down restaurants, juice, smoothie shops, marketing, advertising, movie theaters, nail salon, retirement, re um, re rehab facilities, solo construction, staffing, recruitment, travel-related businesses, including hotels. So, you know, we just need you to have 2018 and 2019 business tax returns, and we would interview you 
And so, in, you know, based on the interview, we would actually determine how, if you qualify, qualify for the program. And so um, we also have what we call a recovery assistance loan. And so this is recovery assistance loan. It's created to provide relief to businesses affected by COVID-19. This is not through the government. This is on the private side. So there are various programs that we can assist you with. And I, we, the intention is we don't want you to feel alone. It's easy for me to talk about this. I'm trying to scan all the opportunities that we have on the finance side, but I don't want you to get overwhelmed, which is why it's important to partner with somebody like, somebody like myself or Fong so that we can guide you through the process and you can focus on the things that you do well, which is run your business. So come to us and we provide a consultancy so that um, so we provide a consultancy so that you can focus your time on the things that you enjoy and the things that you can do well. So, yes. the, all, so Fong, do you want us to um, go further about the other type of financing that someone should be considering? when um, thinking of small to medium-sized businesses, what's available to them? Yes, yes. Besides uh, the, the options I said before, we have kind of the same options that Sandra just talked about. We have we offer a, um, a loan to you, and um, we also have an interview process, application process, that we can talk to you about your potentials and um, the, the options that we have for you to offer you. About the application process, it is um, sometimes it is a little bit um, cumbersome, uh, and I can say it because you have to apply, you have to provide a lot of information. Um, we would like, or, or, or the financial institutions, they would like to see your financials, uh, you, how how you have done it in the previous years, and how you plan to recover. So it is it is not like because a lot of you you think that you can borrow. 100,000, 200,000, you just come in and then you ask for it and then you get 100, 200,000. It is not that easy and straightforward. There are a lot of options, but the process is, is also very difficult because they want to make sure, and we want to make sure that the money is going to help your business, not to help you in the next five months, but it is going to help you to recover and to grow in the next many, many years. So. Absolutely. Yes, yes, with the process, not, not only that we are asking about your personal details, but we also asked about, you know, you have to prove that you have, you, you, you have the address, you, you live in the UK, in the country, and, and you also prove that the, you, you have run the business in certain years, and then in the years, how you run, you run your business, and you also have to prove why you need the loans and what you are going to use the loan for. Therefore, it is very important to um, to support it with your financials, with your cash flow and your um, annual uh, accounting from your accountants. Absolutely. So, yeah, now we are going back to accountant and we're going back to legal. All the documentation you need to have and a lot of you, no, I am not saying all of you, but a lot of you don't find it very exciting because you are very good at the ideas, doing the technologies that you are doing. But we, I, I'm not saying that I love to do it, but I know how to do it because I have done it so many times. So I remember it. It is, it is like to run on the bike. I have done it a few times and I can do it. So I, I can see straight away what paper, what documentation you need to have and how you can support it with your um data with your um accounting absolutely so so that's you know that's the consultancy that we provide we definitely provide you with all sorts of financing so as far as packaging the um packaging the the request you know we will guide you through the process we're not going to bore you right now with telling you all the details but we want to go down the list of different types of financing that are available for people at your stage you know, the small to medium sized companies. Of course, there's the government side, there's the banking side we just talked about, but then also there we get to the side of venture capitalists. So venture capitalists are, you know, um, they are a third party who come into your company and they partner with you. They want to, their main goal and only goal is to, to make a return. So they come in 
and the injecting cap uh, some capital into your in, your enterprise and the percentage of ownership of course will vary and usually it depends on the value of the company this is a good choice because especially for startups because startups usually don't have returns to show startups don't necessarily have that um track record that is required for banking so if the idea is good something some you know an entity a platform like a venture capitalist can come in who shares your vision and see the potential of the company and then can lead you um through um can lead you through um through growth by making a capital injection now yes. you know, sorry sorry sandra I, a, a quick question we are not talking about loan anymore are we just to make sure that yeah. i understand you correctly are you, are you talking about loan no i'm talking about venture capital yes so, yes just just to make sure that we are because think if i was a, a new a, a startup an engineer who doesn't know anything about um finance so it is we are not talking about loans right now with of venture capital thanks no venture capital is definitely nothing to do with debt it yeah. is it, it is more on the equity side so now we're yeah. talking about private capital things that you know, don't, you're not talking about an interest rate, you're talking about equity, or, you know, basically the share of the company. When someone from a venture capital comes into your company, they will want not just a return, but a relationship. They will want some venture capitals want to take over your business. And that's depending. Sometimes they give you a minimal investment. And sometimes venture capitals get a bad reputation because they say that once they give you a small amount for a great share of your company. So that we, we definitely want to let you know that um, when you are dealing with debt, you retain 100% of your company. But when you're starting to invest, when you're starting to allow people to participate in your equity share, then you will be selling a part of your company. So those, that's the difference. So now we are talking about private equity. Private equity and VC, um, there are private equity firms and there are VC firms, the difference is, Private equity deal more with seasoned established company, whereas VC deal with startups. And that's most um, large tech usually have great, if you, that's what Silicon Valley is made of. Silicon Valley is, C, uh, is the majority of VCs, venture capitalists who are looking for a startup idea so they can grow with the company eventually. And they are, usually their end goal is to take the company IPO. So to make the company public so they can get the most for their return. Fong, what you is IPO? Any? Sorry, what is IPO? Well, IPO is when you list a company on a stock exchange. And so you sell share publicly. So when you have a, in, you know, that's it. So now you have a venture capitalist that stays on the private side. But their goal is to actually take you public to be able to bring in on the stock market, at, on the retail end, investors who will buy shares small shares in the company like right now you can go and buy shares in tesla and facebook and g you know in um in ford all the companies all the blue chip companies in the uk it's um it, it's the oh and here i'm sorry um in the us it's the nasdaq and the stock exchange you when you hear some people i'm fascinated i always like you know the when the bell rings who's gonna go public you can look up Nasdaq's actual webpage and they constantly show footage of companies when they actually have gone public, they stand on the balcony and they ring the bell. That means they've officially started selling their shares. How fun is that? I think that would be fun, don't you think? Yeah, well, yes, yes, I love it, I love it. I'm just thinking it is more because when we, we, we have done this so many years, we have done this and then we just talk about it. We don't, I'm thinking more about the people who just, young people who just started, They just just try to get some term in in order so so they they, they know the difference of the different funding so let's give them an example so yeah. let's say you have an idea and you really haven't had any valuation you just have an idea you know your idea is good and you know but you have capital you've exhausted your family your friends and you know the bank loan you can't get a loan so you know that your idea will disrupt the industry. Just like, you know, all that we've seen so far in Silicon, Silicon Valley, we have Amazon, we have, you know, Twitter, you have all the big tech oligarch companies. They all started at some point where you are. So they were able to 
you know, first go to their family and friends. That's the first recommended um, way to raise funds. Then you go to a bank and try to get funding because you still, you're trying to retain 100% of your ownership. Because family and friends says, I'll give you a loan. I don't necessarily need, I want you to succeed. So here's the money. Just pay me back when you can, if you have great parents. You know, for those who don't have great parents, who just say, well, I don't think your idea is good. So you go and go to a bank. And then the bank says, well, come back to us after you've been in business for two years. And then we can decide whether or not you deserve to have our money. So prove yourself first, have a few clients, generate some income, pay, pay the government some taxes, and then come back to us. And then so you have, but you say, you know, you're one of those people who are determined to make it. You are persevering. You have all that energy and passion behind your idea. And then you say, well, I need a good partner who's not going to be taking over my idea because they're not creative. They're just looking for a return. So then you start, because, and, I'm, and I don't have any track record. I just have an idea. I have a team. We're passionate. We're working for free. We're not paying ourselves. And then you, you, you look up, you find yourself a, a venture capitalist, and then you, you speak to them about the idea. This is what I have planned. And um, I think by in five years, my company now is worth maybe $100 million. I'm sorry, $100,000. But I think in five years, we could actually get it to be a billion dollars. And the investor will say to you, well, I'm a venture capitalist. I'm not afraid of you know, new ideas because I actually specialize in new ideas. So I think what you're saying to me sounds very reasonable, especially uh, you're developing a device to be testing um, COVID. Wow, that's phenomenal. So let me see, this would be, this is what the world needs right now. So let me see, let me do the numbers and see if this idea went to market and in five years, could it really be that billion dollar idea? Is it gonna be the next unicorn? And so this person goes away and crunches their numbers and they come back. They say, well, you know, you're right. This is a great idea. So I want to partner with you. I'm going to give you a million dollars. So for a million dollars, I would like to have 30 to 40% of your company. And you say, well, that doesn't make any sense because why would I give you? Because you're going to have for just a million dollars in five years, my company's be worth five, you know, a, a billion dollars. I'm losing so much more. What kind of my, that percentage is not worth it. I can give you 10%. So you're asking, so why is Sandra giving me all this information? To sell you, to negotiate. This is what you do when you're dealing with investors. You negotiate because yes. they're going to want, they're going to want the most of your company. VCs yes. want as much as possible for their money. So go ahead, Fung. Yes. No. You know, it's, it's, I am a new. I am a new. Let, let, let's. I'm a new person. I'm. I got an idea. So I'm not very good at negotiating because I'm so scared. I know. I know that they put in a million and they take a forty percent of my company. I'm not too happy to do it. But 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 I'm not too scared to tell them the truth. What I'm how I'm feeling. So what how what can you do to help me to negotiate? Well, as you could see, I love to negotiate. Because I go in with a smile and I know that the solution is for everyone to win from the negotiating table. You want to walk away happy with what you got and what you gave. And the investor needs to be happy some, it, with what you, um, what you have and what they have and what they gave. So why, how, why would you use someone like me? The reason why is because I have no attachment. I can see, I can be impartial and make sure that you as my client can get the most out of it. Sometimes, you know, someone who's in a company and you are existing, because we're not just speaking to companies who are just starting or small, we're talking about medium-sized companies as well, because one thing you don't understand is when you are a founder, you are attached to the company. I will tell you a story. When I first became an investor, I had a, I was doing it in real estate and um, I was negotiating with, the person who was taking, you know, buying the sh my shares. And I overvalued more than market price for the shares because I was so attached. I really didn't want to sell it. So, you know, you don't want to waste the investor's time is what I'm saying. Because that investor has 10 other people. So you, first of all, you price it properly, which is why it's important to partner with S&P Global because S&P Global Pitch 
will give you the objective true market value of your company so that you can give it to the investor in real time so that you don't waste their time so that they don't waste your time so we do the legwork for you so that you are equipped informed and prepared when you are facing that investor so it, that said you want a lasting relationship so this is the first um first capital raise but this will not be the last there are different series. Do you want to talk about the different series in a capital raise? Paul? Yes, not 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 yet, not yet. Because let let me um let let me start my journey, and then I'll see how you can fit into my com to my journey, and then and then um to match to to match how I can know uh, how you can help me. So so you are saying that we are going to, you can help me to find the right to to negotiate. So absolutely. Yeah, so can you help me to find out whether it is the equity is the best thing to do or a loan is best thing to do for me? Just well, from the very beginning. Sometimes, you know, sometimes a com company has been losing money, which is why they're trying to grow. Most of the companies that are selling shares on the on on the stock exchange, it's because they, you know, they need more revenue, they need more liquidity. So in order to for working capital. So sometimes you don't have the necessary um, um, like, you know, assets or track record to go to a bank and get a loan. So that's where private equity is. You know, sometimes, you know, there are all these shows that, call, you know, they talk about, you know, people who come and take, turn around. The, in, the interesting thing is the, box, the bank is not going to partner with you. The reason why the bank will not take money from you or not take shares from you is because they have a hands-off relationship. They just want their interest and that's it, go away and do or succeed or fail. Just give them their money back. They have no vested interest. They do care whether, you know, whether or not you succeed, but they also um, care, they know that whether you succeed or not doesn't mean that they're going to, they may not get their money. But the investor, the private investor usually has the opportunity or the ability to help you grow your business, to come in. They sometimes have strategic skills that you may not go. For instance, being a small company, you may need an advisory board and that investor becomes that advisory board. We are skilled as SMP Global Pitch. We are skilled at helping you create boards. So we can help you with that as well. We have helped you. And if you're looking to find the right talent and, and, and skills, you know, from a employee standpoint, we can help you source that, those staffing needs. If you, you know, and, but most of all, we can help you find the right investor. I've done yes. that throughout my career. Yes. So, 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 so let, 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 me, let, let me just focus on what I understand from here, what I'll take away from here. Number one is that you would help me to find a finance, whether I can have a loan or, or I, I should go uh, private equity. It's the one of the first things. Of the course. Thing is, yeah, the second thing is you would help me to, uh, to negotiate how much I should give to an investor if he gives me some money and how much I should give to that investor. And number three, you would, like, you would help me to uh, establish a board who could help me to run the companies to make sure that I'm growing, we are growing and, and uh, our financials um, is um, healthy. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, so it's, it's so far so good. And, and then, um, of course, you will at some point need, um, you can add this point to it, all the paperwork will need to be created. So that's when the our legal team or legal expert can come in as part of the S&P Global Pitch Concierge we can provide you the legal team necessary to create the documents, the agreements for you and the investor. So all that is part of the package. We have two packages. One is called the starter package and the, the startup concierge package. And then we have the executive um, corporate package. This is if you're not necessarily needing a lot of uh, handholding, but you just do need the investor relationship, the, t you know, the legal ex expertise, the accountancy expertise, but you don't need the formation pack, you know, skills because you're already an established company. So yeah, so we definitely have options for you. And most of all, for the starter package, we assist you with preparing you for the pitch. When you are going to present, we have the PPP. We have our own in-house PPP. I know I talked about the PPP from the government before. So our PPP is even better for you because our PPP helps you prepare. It's the, it's the pre-pitch um, prep. So the PPP helps you 
to um, prepare, to rehearse, and to fine tune what and how to say to the investor to have that winning pitch. Because you can, you can um, speak to 100,000 in, um, investors, but if you have not fine tuned how you're going to say it and what you're going to say, you would have wasted your time and you would have wasted an opportunity because the goal is to end, we end up at the end of the pitch having an interested investor to say, yes, we have an agreement we can you know we can invest this amount of money depending on what your needs are so yes we prepared s p global pitch we prepare you with for that and our ppp is extraordinary because i've been helping people prepare for for, for decades um well i'm not for some time for over on one decade at least um so we definitely are your partner for the long term because we do uh we we do have experience in um, speaking to these investors, knowing uh, knowing exactly what to include to not waste time. So, Fong, you had some questions or some comments? No, no. I I, I think it helps. It helps to understand what you are saying because I I I know, I know it is very clear. If I don't have, if I can prove can't prove that I have made money, I have done well. Then, then I could go to investors and the investor, if they invest in my company, they would like to me to have share for my company and you would help me to negotiate the share. Absolutely. It is, it is something to understand. And also some people, they are, going, they are saying about selling share. What does it mean? Is it the same type of share you are talking about or is so, it some other yeah, kind of share? Thing. So we just talked about the a venture capitalist who wants shares in the company. So mm -hmm. he's giving you, you know, everybody's in it. What's in it for me? You know, you have everyone out there right now in a survival mode. What's in it for me? So the VC, his business model is to make a return. Every investor, his business model is different from the average, you know, um, private equity firm because they do, they come in in early stage companies, you know, and they're very much aligned with the angel investor who also gives seed capital. So they're very early on. They don't. They won't require necessarily for you to have revenue before they actually start investing. They just need to understand your vision. So this is at the point. This is the. This is the stage where your passion will. You know, your passion, your personality, the way you engage with this investor is so key because you have nothing else but a vision to actually sell. So you know, for angel investors and for venture capitalists you may have to give a little bit more away of the company but you know it, uh, as far as shares are concerned you have to think about based on your valuation how much share how many shares you want to give away because there are people who walk away with nothing because they sold off their company from the start and at the end of the day when they retire from the company you know after they grow the company they barely have any shares. And those are some sad stories because these people put all their hard earned sweat and tears into that company only to sell it off to someone else. So that's once, so that we have the early stage, you know, small business companies. And then you have, as far as share is concerned, we have the other type of financing, which is a partner financing. So you have a single individual who just wants to come in, you know, and be your partner. He has the capital, he doesn't have the expertise. He's just like, you know, give me, I'll be a silent partner. I'll be in the background. They're not structured like a VC. And they are looking to be more of a sort of a silent partner because, you know, they, they see the potential. And, um, but they're still wanting shares. You know, share is cash, right? So when you sell your cash is when you get your return. That's when you, you know, you generate liquidity. And, you know, for, uh, for the investor, you know, they have to figure out when they have those shares, after they, they secure those shares, they're already thinking, how are they going to get out of it? So as you talk about selling shares, you need to start thinking about what exit strategy that, and that can be of, available and offered to the investor. Are you going to be you know, going um, public, like I was talking about earlier with a, as an IPO? Are you going to allow the investor to sell off his share in the secondary market? 
are you going to rebuy re buy back those shares from the investor? So it will vary. Shares are basically just sort of the, the, um, the measure that the quantitative measure for that capital that is coming to your company in exchange. So it is an exchange for capital. Go ahead. Exchange, yeah, yeah, exchange for no, no, exchange for capital. Yes. Um, you were talking about um, the 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 share in the beginning. You know about um, when when angel cap, um, capital capitalist, and then it's the first stage, and then the next stage. Can, can you can you give me some different stages of my growth? How 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 does it work? Well, let's just talk, keep talking about the different types of financing. So um, the growth is, of course, you know, the seed stage is the first stage. And then, yes. and then you have series A and it goes on from there. But, you know, I, I, I spoke about the venture capitalists who actually focus on early stage companies, but they don't limit themselves. There are venture capitalists that, that focus on late stage companies as well. So they can come in at any stage. It's just that these have a specialty for early stage in seed capital. So um, then you have the partner financing that's available at any stage. And then, of course, I spoke about the angel investors. Angel investors are people who deal with smaller numeration. So, for instance, you know, there are the private equity firms. The reason why they don't come in at early stage is because their deal side is usually bigger. So the day you will, they'll come in usually at like the, you know, most of private equity firms that I know are usually at 10 million, but you know, five to 10 million. And, you know, as a, a, a startup or a very small company, you can't really fit into that category. So it's always good to, ben to focus on angel investors and VC and venture capital companies. But then, you know, as a small company, we can go, we can deviate from that, from those type of, and we, if you have, inventory, you know, for instance, if you're selling a product, you know, I talked about um, the bridge loans that we offer. If you have inventory at some, you know, in your business, you can leverage those to actually secure. If you have an investor, a private investor can say, you know, I'm going to help you, you know, I'm going to give you capital, but I need you to um, write me a securitization note so that when you get your receive your money back by selling those you pay me back so it's more like a short-term investor you have some banks that do that but you also have some alternative types of funding and so that's at all levels of you know all stages of the business so small medium size we have if you have products and service you know products or services even for a um you know a, a medical practice if you have a medical practice and you're trying to grow and you're trying to open a new location, you can actually use a sort of invoice financing because, you know, your clients, you know, sometimes you bill them and it doesn't necessarily mean that they pay you right at the time of service. If you have a future dated service, a future payment um, structure, then you can get the money from the private investor and then return, repay the money, of course, at some cost at some point when you get the money back from your clients or for your patients. And now we have other, another form of service, which has come because of technology. We've been seeing a lot of fintech companies in Fung, you're probably the specialist. I know you've been quizzing me, so I'm gonna turn it around to you now. And so you can talk to me more about crowdfunding and see how that is available now to small to medium-sized companies. Yes, crowdfunding. It is a. It is totally different. You can um, you you can get, ask a lot of people uh, to help you with one product. So they can people. So you that you are not going to have one investor to invest in your company, but you can have tens or hundreds of people who can invest in your company because you have a good idea. So they can come in and say, what can I get? And then they can say, okay, I have about 100,000 or I can have 10,000, like I would like to, to contribute. But when you do uh, crowdfunding, you, you, need, you also need to, to, to be very clear 
on your business plan because these investors they will look into it in order to find out themselves what are they even though they just put in five or ten thousand dollars they would like to know if you are going to grow so they are not going to lose the five or ten thousand dollars absolutely and yeah. what in your experience um what type of um, what stage is best for crowdfunding have you have you experienced any yes, limitations? it is. It is more if on the beginning, but not. It it is. It is not exactly. You know, maybe about one or two years. But again, it is my personal observation. You you. It can be different. And um, in order to do it, you f first when when you do it, you you have to make sure that you have you have to run a lot of campaigns. So you have to share. You you have to put it out to a lot of people. You don't focus on one, but you focus on a lot of uh, an audience of people who could be interested on your uh, uh, crowdfunding. So and, uh, I you, consider you as my business partner, as an expert of fintech, because you're an engineer. So is this a field that's growing? Are they competitive now with, um, with, with banks as to where people can, where financing can come from? Yes, it is. It is very um, um, competitive, but 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 it is very attractive for banks because, especially fintech today, we are talking about uh, card payments and we are talking about um, uh, um, coins and um, about payment on the internet. So, so so you don't even you don't even have to um, the, the 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 transaction today is not like it used to be in the um, the old day, and. All the, the businesses today, they are trying to find to do the the, the 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 transaction very easy, and it is very um, there are a lot of companies, and it is very trendy today to do. So so the opportunity for you to do it is very it is very popular, and um, like I just uh, I just had a company who uh, who would like who does uh, an e-commerce platform. And um, they are raising five million pounds, and they are raising. They they, they are selling out their, their their shares, and at the same time, they are also looking for crowdfunding because all the people they, they, you can combine. You don't have to do one method to get the money. You can combine, and that's where sometimes you just need to sit down and try to draw because there are so many options, and you can combine these options and make the best out of it for your business for the model that you are running absolutely and you know i do you know it, it can be overwhelming right phone because sometimes you know i have to keep up I, i'm reading something and i see oh my goodness there's another one there's another one so you know we definitely encourage you to here at smp global to global pitch to partner with us because we've already done the due diligence we know who the right source of capital is for your business type so rather than you having to do the diligence, especially in the world of today, Google can give you a list of 2,000 to choose from. And there are some that are, you know, not all, um, not all funding sources are created equal. For instance, I have relationships with, in, you know, for the U.S. where you could get funding for if you just need a, a you have an emergency, you know, uh, you know, invoice in so that you need to pay. I can even go, like I said, it starts 5,000 to a million um, for small business. And so this is a great partner of mine that I've just, you know, established um, that I've been, I've been utilizing. And so it's, again, you may not need all that is being offered to you. So we are trying to encourage you to be conservative because you don't want to be over leveraged. You definitely want to be conservative. And that's the same for investors. Some people may be scared. They may be say, well, I'm going to bring investors just in case something goes wrong. Be careful because you are selling your business. You are giving away your hard work. So if you don't need it, do, don't do it. And so that's why it's important to have professionals, a team like myself and Fong, who have been experts at this for some time, who can give you some guidance through the process. And you know, you can just, you know, we can be your sounding board, but most of all, we can def definitely be your partner in your capital raise. We are experts at that. And we want to see you succeed. We want to you to focus on the things that you are expert at, which is 
you know, creating your company and creating the product and let us figure out the financial details for you and let us find the right partner for you investing. So the first event, I want to remind you, the first event is November 3rd. This one, we're, talk, talk, we're focused on startup companies. And on November 19th, we will, the platform will be focused on um, small to medium sized companies. So we have um, opportunities for you to come and present to our investors. We definitely want you to benefit from that because in this world of COVID today, we definitely want to make it easier. You can have, as long as you have your screen, a mic, or maybe not a mic, but um, a screen is most important. But um, let us guide you through the process. You may not be ready to pitch on in November, but we have upcoming events in November, in January, and February. Let us decide if you're ready or not, and we can um, guide you through the process. So back to the topic of the day. So we talked about um, banking. We've talked about private. Uh, we've talked about venture capital. We talked about angel um, angel um, investors, which are similar to the um, business model of venture capital because they prefer early stage companies because they are the deal size is usually smaller for them but then we also have um you know crowdfunding where you can actually go to um you know a marketplace a platform to raise capital you put your idea out there and you um you present to some you know you have investors come to you with smaller capital pools and you can have an, an infinite number of investors so we talked about also the invoice financing, which is sort of a slash debt to private capital um, mix. It's kind of a hybrid. You can get it because it's, it's also short term. We talked about bridge lending, which is also debt. So we can talk more about the bigger, if you're a bigger size deal, we have private equity firms, we have family offices. We also have hedge funds that are looking for, you know, to allocate their funds. Um, if you're looking, if you're an established company and, you know, it depends, it doesn't matter where you are. We have those relationships in Asia, Africa, Europe, USA, Latin America, anywhere. Again, the global means global in S&P Global Pitch. So Fong, you want yes. to talk a little bit about um, private equity firms? Yeah, private equity firm. I, um, I also work with some assets management uh, institution from Dubai, Singapore, America and uh, UK, Europe, and um, in the UK, we also in Europe, we also have um, family offices. Uh, we have investors, um, high um, than um, what what do you call it? Um, wealth managers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wealth managers. So um so so they are we, that they are we, we do the same thing for them in the UK and um in Europe there are a lot of uh, types of uh, investors some of them they are investing on in um technologies and some of them they are investing on media you know it is just like uh, um Amazon you are some um, giving people access to um uh TV like online like uh, Netflix and um, there are also people who are doing impact investments because right now we also focus on um, sustainability. So we are thinking about more climate change and um, also some of them are thinking more about renewable energies. So the, because you also remember the investors, they like to invest to make their money grow, but they also focus on the purpose of their businesses. So um, they so, some some just focus on properties, real estate, because this is there they feel comfortable with. And some they do technology like me because when I invest, I mostly invest in technology because I can see the trend. And um, I I believe it is very overwhelming for you today because we say a lot of things that you may think it is confusing. But we can do this again and again, so you can have a, a grasp of what, what is going on and how to make it fit into your company in order to, to understand, to tell us what you need. But regardless, just come to us if you if you want to have more uh, information. 
So the thing is that when we, we are talking about investments, we are talking about different types of investors. If you go to a, a, an investor who just likes to invest in technology, he wouldn't want to help you to produce some kind of uh, a new box uh, or, or a new um, a new bicycle that he may not want it. Or if you want to do renewable energy, you can't go to these um, technology investors. So, so they they are as specific as you are with your ideas. And I understand it is quite difficult to go out and find the person who are liking the, your idea and want to invest it in what you want to do, the product you, you want to sell to make the world different. And um, because we have over 10,000 investors in our database all over the world, so we are sure that we can find an investor who would like, who would be interested in to hear your idea and to help you to put um, uh, with your to promote your products and services in that in the area of their interest. Absolutely. So, so thank you for that. That's brilliant. And you know, of course, we say here we have an infinite number of um, of investors, and it's growing every day. And I I think we're closer to twenty thousand at this point. You know, in in relationships yeah. and between the two of us and so we keep growing so you know we are also tell, talking to investors out there if you're looking to allocate if you're looking to find a new idea we invite you we encourage you to reach out to us so that we can help you source your next deal and how to you know how and save you time because i know it's in this day of covid you don't get to network as much well let's let let us do the search for you we will bring you the right opportunity so that um you can, you know, this is we're going into the fourth quarter of 2020. The year is almost over. Let's help you prepare for 2021. I can't believe I'm actually saying 2021. 2020 is almost over. So, you know, I know a lot of people are, are, was, have been sitting by waiting for the U.S. election. There's a lot of uncertainty out there. So let us help you figure out what your strategy is going to be and where, what's the best safe, you know, COVID, you know, the, the, the health situation um, globally has disrupted quite a bit. You know, what the, no, there's no new normal, there's no normal right now. So it's about recreating and reinventing yourself. Everybody's trying to do this, um, you know, right now trying to think about how they're going to start 2021. So as the investor, we encourage you to reach out to us here at S&P Global Pitch. We want you to be part of the audience so that you can come see our, uh, our the you know the the founders that we have lined up for you, and of course, this is a really long-term relationship. So even in between pitch events, we want to hear from you. We want to help you grow your portfolio. We want to help you get your a higher return. So whatever your need is, whatever market, your whatever um, sector you're interested in, we have the we have that for you. So reach out to us. And that said, you know, one of the last, um, one of the last types of uh, uh, financing that uh, we want to, I want to talk about, and Fong, you and I have shared about this, we want, we want that for our own companies, it's convertible debt, correct? We, you and I have talked about this, and do you want to touch on that and tell the audience um, what convertible debt is and why it's so beneficial for companies right now? No, I think that you are better to explain than I am because uh, then I will start to. I just talk so much. I want to give no, you no, an no, opportunity. Don't, don't worry. It is because the problem is that I I I I started to be very um passionate and then and then I I I just run over to technology again. So I, I, it is better that you talk about it. So convertible debt is just that. It is debt. It starts off at debt. You know, you, some people have heard about maybe mezzanine. You know, convertible debt, it's, it starts off at debt. It's just like going to, you know, you have an interest rate and the investor would actually give you the money in form of a debt with a future promise that it will convert into a equity position at some point. So equity position, meaning you will give them a share of the company for the, for, in, for the debt um, structure that they are giving you today. So it is yeah. a two phase process. It's not like when you go to a bank and you actually get a debt and you pay it back, it stays a debt. Or if you go to a venture capitalist or a private equity firm, uh, well, 
venture capital, you know, they automatically want it to be equity. But there are investors out there who are being creative because they do know that, you know, sometimes, you know, it's it's better to start off that way. The benefit of that is you don't sell off your company right away. And yes. so there are constant, you know, there are, there are, you know, there's there's room for uh, restructuring. So which means that at the time when the debt, um, you can even revisit what you've, you know, you can reopen negotiations again. Um, but it's pretty much set. They give you a duration, a certain time frame. They say for one year or two years, um, you will have a debt instrument. And at the end of that time, that time frame, it will convert and it will become equity. And I will have a certain portion of your company. And yes. that's pretty straightforward. You know, in finance, they use all these complicated, I was so afraid to get into finance. They had all these complicated terms that you don't, unless you're in the business, you don't understand. It's like being a doctor. You know, you yes. think doctors are so smart. They're like, well, but then you become a doctor. It's like, it's, it's nothing. So, you know, it's interesting so because for me, I remember before I said to you, when I first started in the finance world, somebody had to sit me down and explain to me exactly A, B, C, D of finance. And then I became this person that could actually speak, like I'm speaking to you today and explain to you what that is. It's interesting. And I, I'm so grateful to my mentor back then who had patient with me because I was like, back then I was just like, um, I was more interested in, you know, what clothes I was going to wear than, you know, reading a, a chart or, you know, a, a, a interest rate, you know, I didn't want to know any of that. But fortunately, he convinced me that I ha he saw potential in me and I could do it. And I said, I don't want to do this. But um, fast forward, I became, you know, a fluent in it. It's again, it's just fluency. It's just like any other language. You know, I yes. speak multiple language. And following you this year, I remember the first time I was learning English, I looked at the, the teacher. I said, oh, my goodness, this is not going to work. But listen to me now. Can't stop talking. Now people say to me, speak French. And I said, oh. That was my, that is supposed to be my first language, but I'm more fluent in English now than I, than I am in French, only because I practice it more. So these, mm -hmm. this, I'm saying all that to say those terms, those financial terms that we um, Exactly. Speak, we will Sorry. put the links to, you know, we will put the definitions at the bottom of this, e of this video so that you can see exactly what we're referring to. And awesome. a couple of lines you know, to refer to each and every one of those um, items that, you know, those terms that we, because we want to educate you. The exactly, the exactly. That's, that's what I educate. want. Yeah, sorry, sorry, I interrupt you because now, before I forget, you know, you said, you, you said about exit strategy, you said about liquidity, you said about private equity, and then now it is so confusing. Before we said about debt, and then now you mix the two things together. It took me so long time to understand convertible debt but I think that people can have the same question. I, I don't know, but it took me a long time to understand how, why people are doing. They, 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 they keep provider alone and they wanted to convert it over to a, a private equity, a, a equity later on. And, uh, and I didn't understand why they did it, why we just can stick to debt and then private equity, two different things. Why do we mix the two things together? It took me really long time to understand. So what did you find out? No, I found out like, like you said, it, it is because it is beneficial for both sides yeah. because with that, it is, it is very easy for, for me to keep you alone. And I say, you, you, you pay me 3%, so I know I'm going to take 3%. And for you as a, um, a, a company, you have to pay me 3% and you don't have to worry about your share of your company. I don't care. You just give me 3%. And it gives me the choice later on, I can take out my, my, my money or I could invest it in your company. And by that time, you are also very clear yourself how much you want to, 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 to sell your share. Absolutely. And, you know, yeah. I think sometimes, you know, it's like a relationship, you know, you're in yes. a relationship, your husband, you, you don't really define the relationship. It's good. Before the marriage, you actually say you have all these high goals, but it's not, it's not until you actually enter the relationship that you actually say, hmm. You know, I had agreed to this, but I think I want to change my mind. I changed my mind. I don't think this is going to work. And that's why there's always divorce. So, you know, I don't encourage the, you know, I'm, there is always divorce in, in, in this, in, you know, in this relationship, in this setting as well. Don't ever think that you cannot exit a situation. As a founder, you always have a way out. 
you know, and there's been sometimes, you know, you have to beg the investor, please go away because you're, tr you're trouble. Some investors like to be very involved. Some investors don't like to be involved. And sometimes even with banks and sometimes you don't read all the fine print because you know, um, some people are just happy to get the money and they don't understand the, the traditional bank will give you a low interest rate, a single digit interest rate. But there are banks out there that will have to give you a double digit interest rate. And it's not until you start repaying the loan that you're like, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm spending more money on, on my, you know, I'm giving away my profits on paying this loan. So it's important that you know if you needed to get out of that relationship, that if it's a loan, you can refinance. If it's in an investor, you can get another investor to buy that investor out. Always have a backup plan. Always have a backup plan. And it's the same for the investor. And of course, I, my investors are not new. But it's more for founders who are looking to, you know, create more liquidity in their found in their enterprise. Always understand who you're doing business with, do research. And that's why, again, not to be redundant, but having a partner like us, we can educate you as to the type of investor and even within the category of investor, because from one investor to the other, for instance, within venture capitals, capital firms, there are different ways of operating there are some venture capital firms that want to be, come into your company and they want to take over and they want you to be silent they don't want to hear from you they will just take take care of everything and you'll become one of their employees but there are venture capital firms that really want to have a hands-off situation experience they let you lead and they just want to just be able to be called on they become more like an advisory when you need their advice that you call on them and you're pretty much still in charge. So you need to know the difference. And there is benefit for both. There are founders that need more handholding, so can benefit from an a, a, a investor that has a lot of experience that can say, all right, just let me take charge because if you don't let me take charge, you're gonna fail. And there are those founders who have a lot of expertise, like myself and Fung, we're quite seasoned. If we were to get an investor, we don't need help as much. So we would definitely want, just want your money and not need that much advisory. So you have to be informed. You have to be um, educated as to what is the perfect fit for you. And also culturally, when you think about investors, you're gonna have very different style of investing from someone who comes from the US than someone who's gonna come from the UK. Also from an investor who is from India or from, from um, any other part of Asia, Americans, like me, we love to talk. So you may not have the appreciation for American. You may not want to be on the phone with that investor 24 hours a day because he's, he has a question. I have a question. I have a 24 hours. You just want to focus. So you just need to understand the cultural dynamic of the investor and the money source that you're getting from. The Brits are a little bit more quiet, more reserved. They, ha they say it once and they won't repeat themselves. Americans have a tendency to say it over and over and over again. So that said, know who you are getting a relationship with, not just the structure of the capital source, but the culture of the capital source. Yes, well, exactly. So just before we close, I have a question for you, Sandra. For me? Why, yeah, why does it have to be so complicated with all these terms and different kind of uh, financing? Why can't it just be a debt or equity? Why, why, why does it have to be so complicated? Well, because, you know, the times require different needs. I think just like any idea, I mean, I, I, when I started in the business, there was no such thing as crowdfunding, right? So I think, you know, they've become, and, you know, private equity wasn't also as familiar. First of all, private equity, they saw they were seeing them as predators. But business founders have become more smarter, right? So you have people who are having different needs. And also because banks are not uh, the next, you know, you, not everyone can walk into a bank and just say, I need $100,000. So the financing world has had to become creative. When I started in, 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 in banking, I wanted to be creative. I've always, I've started branding myself as a very creative um, solution um, provider because I realized that not everybody was gonna be 
the ideal banking client. So which is why I went from being a banker to a, more, to a, a mortgage broker because I was in real estate. Because mortgage broker, you have more creativity, you have all the different types of funding. So it's more about meeting the client's need. So what is the need of the client? You know, of course, in economics, we know about supply and demand. So the, the demand is usually what dictates the supply. So the creativity is or usually comes from what the client needs. And nobody would be in business if there wasn't a, a, a demand for the, for the services that they were providing. So crowdfunding, we find that there is a, um, an uh, infinite number of people who like being out there summoning different partners in that type of structure, in that type of format, and it works for them. It gives them a competitive edge because they, that's the alternative solution to going to the traditional bank. And then alternative funding, the same thing. You may have to deal with a higher giveaway for your company or in a higher interest rate. But again, you if you were able to like, you know, the average traditional A paper um, um, client, you could walk into a bank and get the money. Those alternatives are usually for people who cannot just get like a three percent. So that's why it, it's not complicated. It's just more um solution minded because it gives you more options yes yeah, so you are saying that it is complicated it is it it has become more no i said the word complicated but but it is it is going that way because users because the companies want more want different things and want more well, their needs change, you know, yeah, needs yeah, change. Yeah, I mean, the, the marketplace has changed. You have more companies launching now and younger too. A lot of these people don't have credit. Remember startups are people who are just yeah. barely out of college. They don't have credit. So you have to have a finance, you know, unless you have your mom and dad, like I said, you have, you know, the perfect family and you can just yeah. say, mom, write me a check for a hundred thousand dollars. Cause I'm launching a company. And your mom says, honey, a hundred thousand is not enough. Hold it. I'll give you a hundred, um, you know, 500,000. You know, and so if you grow up in that way, congratulations, <laughs> because that's not the average person. So, and I say to the parents, good job. But you know, that don't, don't get depressed if you didn't grow up in that kind of family. There are investors out there who can substitute, who can replace your parents and write you a check. So the need is different because you have people, like I said, who are starting businesses at a younger age. Though most of those large companies, large tech companies, these people started their companies in the 20s. They didn't have credit. So you have to have, you know, a backup plan, which means, a, you know, you know, we the seek strangers who are going to write you a check, who are not going to look at your credit. They're going to look at the value of the company, the value proposition of what you are offering them. So that's what you need to be clear about. If you're not going to check, if they're not going to check your credit, what can I secure this money with? My idea, is it valuable enough that somebody's going to write me a check and say, pay me later? Or is my company, you know, is my product, a, uh, you know, valuable that when I go to a different market, I can generate enough income to not only have as working capital, but to pay my investors because you pay your investors first and then you pay yourself. So keep that in mind. So you want to make sure that you'll be able to pay your investors and pay yourself as well. We don't want any of the founders starving. These needs to be a, a clear plan so that the money that you are using when you pay your investors back there's enough for you to survive and also to pay your employees because without you and without your employees you got nothing there are you know and, be, and we caution you because of course you know i i you know i raise capital so i'm not a per se someone a investment professional who you know looks at your ira and things like you know there are options there for that or other people who specialize in that. What I do say is common sense. Common sense is make sure you don't give away all your profits. Make sure that you keep some for you. Make sure that you build reserves so that you can grow your company. And if you have a rainy day, like right now we're having, many companies are having because of COVID, that you will survive the storm. That's yes. all I'm cautioning you. Yes, it is, it is something that we are doing too however it is so difficult to understand how to how to keep it for ourselves but we are coming to the end of the webinar 
and um, I would like uh, I would suggest that we are going to do uh, con um, we continue this conversation again just to make sure that we provide all the information to people and also to to to, to um, firm up the terms that we are using and uh, the the different products that are available out there for for people. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yes, but but. Oh, well for me it has been very very useful even though I, I i i think it is if i i have met you you 10 years ago i would love it but 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 it is it is not it is it is nice to know again to to to, to listen to it again because you can't get enough of it you just have you just have to make sure because people are defining things even though it is the same thing but the way you explained it is different to other people it makes it easy to understand and especially when there are so many terms in the beginning to get used to it i yes. you know i like to have smart people in the world so if i can share a little bit of what i've learned because i was always that person asking questions didn't know anything about numbers didn't want numbers i my uh, my first degree is in psychology i wanted to heal people's minds i was like oh no that's too much work that's too much help so basically um so basically all we have to do is focus on what we want make sure that we have the right partners information available to us so we can be informed, experienced, and empowered. So empowerment is key here. Knowledge is power. We want you to be an educated um, founder and you know, eventually seasoned. So we, can, we say everything that you're learning here, we want you to pay it forward so that when you get to that stage, you can look back and said, look, I learned from S&P Global Pitch because they were willing to give this information freely. I want to do the same. So we welcome you and to reach out to us. If you have any questions, put your comments below. Our email and contact is available. And we, um, we look forward to our Facebook page, Instagram, and all parlay accounts, every, all social media is all available. Please reach out to us. We are looking for also to do joint ventures if you already have you know a platform and you want us to be guests on your platform to discuss we will be happy to do that of course synergy is wonderful and um fong um do you have any final words no i would like um i just like to um to do um i know it is days a lot to take on but i would like you to know that we are here to help and uh, we have been exactly where you are it is very confusing with all the terms and all the, the products that you have to understand but um the good thing is that we know exactly what you need and we are going to help you to understand what you want to understand because we know what you need because sometimes i used to say you don't know what you don't know because you don't know then you don't even know how to ask but now we know what you don't know can you say it that way that, and then we are going to help you to give you the exact answer to your questions or to you to 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 the the the, the puzzle that you are looking for and you don't even know that you need but we know that it is what you need so so it is like to be a little bit proactive in the process yeah so that was wonderful so mm -hmm. we will recap every topic i mean every um type of um you know terms that we discuss we'll list them below the underneath the um the you know the video under the video but like share subscribe s p global on sendor tv we are so excited that you have joined us for this session for another session we are moving along i remember we did our first so if you haven't seen the other episode just to build on this journey with us go back to one two three and um we can go keep going um, we want to hear from you. We want to see how we can help you. We are excited about your success. We know, we know how, uh, how lonely it can be sometimes when you don't have the right team. So reach out to us so we can be that sounding board. We can be that coach, that mentor to you to ensure that, you know, the way forward for you is absolutely absolute certainty uh, in, in no, uh, no other terms than just complete success. We believe in yeah. you. We believe yes. in you and, you know, believe in yourself. Your ideas are brilliant. Your ideas are needed. Your ideas are valuable. 
So let us help you. Again, we have the starter package, we have the executive package. Reach out to us so we can discuss our mentoring program. And um, if you're in need right now, if you don't need that necessarily, we can help you source the right capital, the right investor. Until the next time, ladies and gentlemen, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks again for being part of another Founders Talk with myself, Sandra Dorsey. Yeah, folks, go, go. See you again next time. Good night yeah. and good afternoon, wherever you are. Indeed. We thank you for joining us this evening. And as we come to a close of this event, we are thankful that you are part of this community. Leave us your comments uh, below. Also subscribe, share, and like the video. Um, when you hit the bell, we will notify you when we have other events.